I'm Phil Smith. Today we're in New Plymouth, a city with a suburb named for New Zealand's second governor, Fitzroy. And Robert Fitzroy has a very close connection with this series. It was he who unwittingly propelled Charles Darwin in his ideas on evolution. The story shows how history has a way of mocking our decisions. It goes a bit like this. Fitzroy was an officer on the HMS Beagle when the captain, presumably lonely and depressed on a very long voyage, shot himself in the head. While this was good for Fitzroy, he was made the captain, it troubled him because his family had a history of some mental instability and of similar ends. His uncle, the Viscount Castlereagh, had slit his own throat not long before. So before undertaking his first real long voyage as captain, he decided to invite a passenger, a gentleman's companion. Of course, he just couldn't fraternise with anybody. The person he chose, his second choice, by the way, was Darwin, an amateur botanist, and reassuringly, a man of the cloth, a man trained in religion. Fitzroy was also a scientist of a sort, and he was especially keen to discover any evidence he could to support a literal interpretation of the biblical creation story. Now, Fitzroy and Darwin hardly became bosom buddies on the journey, but Captain Fitzroy did survive the five-year-long voyage, so that's something. He survived to become the second governor of New Zealand, while at the same time Darwin sat at home cogitating his ideas. Later, when Darwin's book on evolution was finally released, Fitzroy was filled with dismay and with guilt that it was on his boat that Darwin had conceived this theory. It wasn't really good for his nerves. Indeed, at the famous debate in Oxford, where Huxley faced off against Bishop Wilberforce, Fitzroy was there. He was walking up and down the aisles, waving a huge Bible over his head and reportedly shouting, The book! The book! And just five years later, possibly still haunted by his choice of gentleman's companion, he woke one morning, took up his razor, and just like his uncle, slit his own throat. No one could say that ideas aren't dangerous.